Throughout our lives, we've experienced the unexplainable, from bright apparitions to dark entities, changing our perspectives on the afterlife. Now we seek answers and intend to capture evidence of paranormal existence. These are our paranormal experiences. Sir John Franklin was a polar hero and explorer and succeeded George Arthur as governor of Van Diemen's Land in January 1837. Sir John would also later lead the fateful expedition to discover the Northwest Passage in the Canadian Arctic in 1845. Franklin also has historical connections to many other haunted locations, such as the Bush Inn and the Royal Derwent Hospital site, mainly the Willowcourt section. John was born on the 6th of April 1786 at Spilsby, Lincolnshire, England. After undertaking some initial education, he joined the Royal Navy at 14 and experienced action a year later in the Battle of Copenhagen. However, soon afterwards, he served as a midshipman under Matthew Flinders on the Investigator, whom would be the first voyager and explorer to confirm that Australia was indeed a continent. However, he could not complete a detailed survey due to scurvy and the crew's unseaworthiness. This expedition would inspire Franklin, kindling his lifelong passion for exploration. Returning to war duty in 1804, he served on the Bellophon and later Bedford and Forth, taking part in the Napoleonic Wars and the war against the United States. During this time, he has been described as being very conspicuous, full of zeal and active. In 1818, after the wars, the Royal Navy's interest in exploring alternative trade routes in the Arctic peaked and it would be their focus for the next 36 years. Two Arctic expeditions were launched in 1818. Franklin commanded the Trent and accompanied Commander Buchan, who attempted to cross the Arctic Ocean. However, the ice was impenetrable. In 1819, Franklin was charged with exploring the Northwest Passage with a small company and relied only on light sailing craft and their own feet. However, ill preparation, inexperience and the inflexibility of Franklin during the expedition resulted in disaster with nine dying of starvation and exposure. Franklin's shortcomings were never acknowledged and courage rather than talent was expected in explorers. Franklin led another expedition in 1825, mapping the coastline of the Canadian Arctic, but this was uneventful. They explored some 370 miles of uncharted coast on foot, which is about 595 kilometers, before returning home in 1827. While he enjoyed the success and was rewarded generously receiving a knighthood, honours and a medal from the Society of Geography, the Admiralty informed him that they would no longer undertake additional expeditions. Between 1828 and 1836 he remained mostly idle, only having stints of duty either as a naval commander or diplomat. However, in 1837 Franklin had a stroke of luck as he was offered to succeed George Arthur as Lieutenant Governor of Van Diemen's Land. When Franklin arrived, Van Diemen's Land was an open-air prison, of whom 17,593 souls out of a total population of 42,795, including the military and aboriginals, were convicts. Under Arthur, convicts served their sentence under the assignment system, in which they were assessed and questioned on former occupations and then assigned to a private master or used for public works. Using a convict labour force increased the value of private and colonial holdings, while the system was somewhat successful, the convict system and the safety of the colony's free inhabitants depended on invasive vigilance and industry of the government. Such invasive vigilance was a part of a rigid reward and punishment system, which could vary from fines, cautions, floggings from 12 to 100 lashes, and sentences to cells, treadwheel, and public stocks. A convict sentence could be extended, they could be sentenced to the road and chain gangs, or magistrates could sentence a prisoner to a penal station. 
Consequently, this made Arthur's administration unpopular in the colony. While wealthy landowners profited substantially from their free labour forces, other colonists did not benefit and demanded an introduction of a representative government and the abolition of the transport system. However, Governor Arthur's administration or party was opposed to any changes. Later, Arthur would defend the transportation and assignment systems, explaining that the British government should maintain the status quo or else risk being exposed to the really hostile feelings of the inhabitants, whose wealth and status largely depended on their cheap labour. However, Franklin's private secretary, Alexander Makinochi, described Arthur's carefully built up system as cruel, uncertain, prodigal and ineffectual regarding convict reform. Furthermore, the Molesworth Parliamentary Committee on Transportation in England saw the practice as evidence of a slave experience in the colonies and suggested that it should be discontinued. Convict transportation quickly lost most of its erstwhile supporters and its eventual demise in 1853 was widely celebrated. But this is outside the time period of our episode on Sir John Franklin. Franklin's reputation as an explorer, naval veteran, and as a sympathetic individual led to certain expectations among some of the colonists that the old autocratic bureaucracy would be broken up and replaced by a more liberal regime. However, Franklin was inexperienced in governing and colonial affairs and could not avoid Arthur's former officials. Consequently, the old party of administrators such as the colonial secretary, John Montague, and his brother-in-law and chief police magistrate Matthew Foster were able to hold him to power and became an obstacle for Franklin as he reformed the convict system and introduced educational institutions. Franklin removed the former assignment system and implemented the probation system. Probation was to enforce a system starting with a period of hard labour before the staged progression towards freedom. Stage 1. Temporary incarceration in an English penitentiary with some hard labour. Stage 2. Transportation to Van Diemen's Land with hard labour in a probation gang. Stage 3. Potential to earn a probation pass to wholly or partly work for oneself. Stage 4. Earn a ticket of leave or self-sufficiency before pardon or emancipation. Franklin claims that the first stages of probation will be to enforce habits of obedience, to arouse the moral energies, and to bring the mind of each prisoner under the influence of rightful impressions. Labour was, said Franklin, a convict's just desert and consequence of guilt. Later stages involved more freedoms and religious teachings and education. Franklin believed that the lack of education and impersonal interests and of a sense of community were the causes contributing to the state of inflamed feelings, suspicion and bitterness. Appealing to the local settlers and as Britain grew more dissatisfied with transportation, Franklin's policies aimed to emancipate Britain's earring children from the wretched and definitively more degrading slavery of crime. Franklin painted his new reforms and policies very positively. However, the new complex system demanded a larger bureaucracy and was not as lucrative for landowners, merchants or farmers compared to the assignment system. Franklin's reforms coincided with one of Australia's early economic depressions, which made matters worse as the cost of living increased and so did the cost of labour due to the reforms making any form of development difficult. The public works of the colony shall no longer be in recipient of the labour of any employed convicts graciously, but must pay six pence per diem to the British Treasury for each convict employed on public works. Convicts who were rewarded with private work could not find any employment and continued to partake in public duties with their assigned gang. These large gangs became an issue as policing them required two to three overseers for each subgroup of 10 to 20 convicts. The probation system also relied on other convicts as overseers, as the colony did not have enough troops to guard the convicts. As a result, the convict overseers often used bullying and violence to control the gangs, reinforcing an already harsh working environment. There were also issues regarding homosexuality and lesbianism, as the probation system according to 19th century views bred immorality and unnatural practices that became a facet of the system. This was due to the lack of suitable accommodation. The buildings were simply inadequate to house the increasing numbers of convicts involved. While Franklin promoted and stimulated education and cultural welfare, checked corruption, and has been acknowledged for his humane theoretical approach to the convict system, he was eventually dismissed as governor as his relationship with the colonial office became strained as opponents to the probation system gained more momentum. John Montague, the colonial secretary and a part of the faction, used Lady Jane's assistance to her husband as a weapon and accused Franklin of being influenced by his wife on colonial and government policies. In 19th century society, it was not a woman's place to meddle in such affairs. While Lady Jane could be seen as being quite modern, she did not fit the conservative picture of the domesticated woman. This negatively impacted upon Franklin's own reputation. 
At the end of Franklin's first year in government, John Montague, the colonial secretary, wrote to Arthur and described that, the high qualities which were so conspicuous in Sir John at the North Pole have not accompanied him to the South. The probation system failed because it was designed at a distance and did not suit the economic conditions of the colony. Opposition towards the probation system came from those oppressed by it and by those outside it. In 1843, Sir John Franklin was humiliatingly dismissed as governor of Van Diemen's Land. His pride and reputation had been diminished as he left the colony with his tail between his legs. To redeem his reputation, Franklin set out in 1845 to find the elusive Northwest Passage that earlier expeditions had failed to discover. 